hi, my name is Riley Carroll. I'm the Arts and Life Editor of the Paisano Independent Student Newspaper at the University of Texas at San Antonio. And today I'm here with Mega Mango. Would you guys please introduce yourselves? Uh, I'm Carl. I'm the, I sing. Hi, my, hi, my name's Nico. I play bass. I'm Sam. I play drums. And I'm Alex. I play guitar. Awesome. Thank you, guys. It's nice to meet you all. And let's jump right in. Let me make sure I have my secondary audio going. All right, perfect. Okay, so in an Instagram live stream this past Sunday, Crow mentioned that they have previously been to Texas and even to San Antonio, um, where my current newspaper and I are per currently based. Has anyone else been to Texas yet, or will the Fun and Games tour be your first time being here? Oh, have you been to Texas before? I've never been to Texas before. Here am I. No, no, I haven't. I haven't been ever. I, 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 so we briefly talked about it in the live stream. I, I went a couple years ago. I have a, my like best friend from my childhood moved there. Um, oh, wow. So I went to visit her a few years ago. Um, How was yeah. it? it? I mean, <laughs> going to school, it was, yeah. I, we didn't, it, we didn't do much like, like, it's Texas. Let's go see Texas. You know, you were just hanging. Yeah. 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 But for the rest of us, yeah, this is the first time. I'm really excited. Definitely. Yeah, really awesome. Thanks. Yeah, I'm excited to see you guys play live as well. I can't wait. And also, Crow, you mentioned that uh, when you're writing songs, you can't know the exact words until you know the melody, but you also can't know the exact melody until you know the words, which seems really frustrating. I don't know if I could handle that as a songwriter. <laughs> so what I want to know is, how does your songwriting yeah. process usually unfold? Oh, sorry, you kind of cut out there. I, 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 th I think I got it, though. Got it? The question was, how does how does my songwriting process usually unfold? Um, uh, it all kind of happens at once, I think. Um, I I have to sit down with my guitar and, you know, usually playing some chords first just to get a, a key and, and some movement going. Um, and then the words and melody pretty much happen at the same time because uh, I'm, I'm really particular about the way that I um, emphasize syllables in words. Um, it's the, there are some songs I can't listen to because the, the phrasing really bothers me um, and they're good songs and, and, and like the melody will be really good and the lyrics are good. It's just like the way that they um, matched up the, the phrasing. It's, it, it doesn't sound like the way someone would say it. Um, and that's something that's really important to me. So I think, um, because I'm really particular about that, the, the, uh, um, my, my, my writing kind of has to happen all, all at once for it to fall into place naturally. Um, as if I'm saying it, like telling a story rather than singing a song, making a, um, a, a piece of music which i am you know but it's it's also a, a story and and something to say that's why i'm writing the words so understood and do any of your songs typically um give you that that vibe where it's like the emphasis on in which the way you say something does that ever bother you with any of your own songs or is it just other people's songs you have fully changed words like yeah we've yeah. only re-recorded takes for that reason yeah. i feel like that's well, how i'm sure there was um i forget which iteration of Bubble, but I remember there was one we recorded originally. Um, I was like, I just don't love yeah. that. Um, I think it was some something in the second verse. I can't even remember what it was, um, but but the second verse I changed because I just, it wasn't, it didn't sound like It always surprises me too, because like that's something that the music, I don't think, not that it doesn't, I guess, bug me as much, but like, yeah, when you point it out, and then you switch it, I'm like, oh, you're, you're so right. It's like sounds so much better when it sounds like you're staying it naturally. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, definitely. And how does the songwriting process unfold for the rest of you guys as well? Usually, Crow brings the like chords and um, melodies, lyrics, uh, like a finished track, just acoustic almost. Mm -hmm. And we bring that in here, and then I'll, I'll usually start by like trying to write a scratch drum beat. Um, and then Nico usually throws bass on, and then we kind of just build it from the ground up, using that as like a skeleton, using what Crow came in with as a skeleton. I, I, Very cool. I don't know, for like each, I feel like each segment like takes a 
it takes a little bit to kind of develop because once once you leave a sketch, I, I feel like I'll work on a baseline. It can take like either like an hour or it can take days sometimes because it's just matching the rhythms and prose. Yeah. Like melody and delivery is is something that I think we emphasize a lot in our music through like different instruments and and I don't know, other techniques special effects and stuff a lot of reinforcing uh crow's original idea yeah. through other elements of the song even with the drums at some points for like mm -hmm. emphasizing how you're pronouncing something changing the beat around how you're delivering a phrase and i think that's like looking from because i'm i haven't really been as much a part of that because like alex said he's usually laying tracks down and we, we've we've had the opportunity to maybe use like an electronic drum kit to do more of that but just as someone looking in kind of in that, in that regard, it's, it's kind of amazing to me. Like if just one person wasn't bringing what you just heard to the table, it wouldn't be as, I don't know, substantial. Like the output wouldn't be as substantial nearly. And the fact that it is, is such a like fortune, honestly. Interesting. So. Very cool. So it, it all kind of gets initiated by Crow's lyricism and kind of melody going on. Yeah. Yes. At this point, at least, I know you've expressed uh, like recently wanting to like kind of have that starting point come from other members. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, everything that's out right now, everything we're working on for the foreseeable future is still in sort of that style where we're we're starting with Crow's skeleton. Yeah. But in the future, it could change. Please bring me demos. <laughs> I've I've wanted you have it's, it's, I, I've wanted to. We just spent that time it's in the meetings. Yeah. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> Show, show us the demos. Yeah, definitely. And for those of you that release music under like a solo project, um, I know Alex has Diet Lemon, correct? Yes, yes. Diet Lemon. So, how do you guys distinguish what pieces will be designated for your solo projects or for the group? Oh, that's a great question. I, at like, this point, I don't write anything for myself. Yeah, like Crow, Crow writes. For Mega Mango and like those songs, we just kind of, they're always Mega Mango songs from front to back, from start to finish. Mm -hmm. And same with Diet Lemon. Like I'll, I'll write those songs on my own and then just kind of produce them on my own. Occasionally I will, I'll ask her for guidance. Um, if there's like a melody I don't like or a lyric, because like we were talking about earlier, Crow's really good at phrasing. Um, and, and then some of the songs, Nico will record a bass line. I'll be like, ask him to write a bass part, but they are at this point kind of separate, I guess, in terms of the writing processes. Okay, so it's just initiated separately completely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very cool. And uh, what is the Mega Mango song that each of you are the most proud of and why? Risk. Risk. Your risk? By far, yeah. I think that was the first time, I'm really proud of that track specifically because that was the first time I think we really nailed down like the formula in terms of like elements and how they fit in the track. Like that was the first time in my opinion, everything really just clicked. And it just was like, yeah, that's a Mega Mango song. Um, to me personally. I I feel that. I think I think I've I I probably have to have, would have to say the same thing. Um I think in terms of like I, I can't say risk is my Favorite. I don't think I have a favorite. I love them all. It's like They're my favorite favorite child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but I don't know. I think for for me, the way it started, um, that first verse, um, I wrote kind of right before the pandemic. Um, I was already kind of in the pandemic a little bit. You know, I I I think I was really struggling before then. Um. With, with school and I was I was just getting really sick all the time um a lot of um just anxiety about everything and I think it was it was making me physically ill um and uh so I, you know that's what that kind of um don't you think it's crazy if it's making me sick you know like 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 it's it's mm -hmm. um the those uh I don't know the, the the way that it started and 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 the way that it it finished. I think it 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 did exactly what it needed to do. Um, it I think when people listen to it, they can hear what what that felt like, and that's that's really familiar. Uh, everyone kind of went through that at at one point. Um, so true. 
you know so it's it's, it's just like real and relevant to a lot of people right now um i think i'm i'm just i'm i'm very proud of the way it like has resonated with people i think definitely yeah and i think it's very relatable too for me personally I think... oh sorry there's a delay i apologize yeah the, the connection's so spotty i apologize for that like <laughs> Um, but for me, I think I really enjoy all the new sort of ideas that come from working on like newer tracks. And for me, like, I think Clue currently is standing at one of my favorites, at least personally for the lines that like we all kind of have and how that song evolves and holds up to the rest of the EP as well, considering it's like how we see it as like an amalgamation of all these different ideas and tones and, 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 and motifs, um, it, it, it kind of just stands as its own sort of body while also being every other song that we have on the CP. Um, but it just sort of, I don't know, shows a lot of growth, I guess. It, that, that song to me at least holds like, this is how we've evolved up until this point. And it's something I feel really proud of. Um, when I'm listening to it. I think it's the only song I'll actually willingly listen to <laughs> on, on <laughs> of our like, EP. Like, I don't know. In that Why same that? vein, I feel like Boggle one of the, honestly, like, one of the catchiest songs I've ever heard in my entire life. I'm, like, not even kidding. Like, Is that's it Boggle? Boggle. I don't know. I just, I've always been a huge Boggle stan, and I will never apologize for it. That's how Sam got involved. Boggle. Yeah. He came to the release party for Boggle and was like, you guys need a drummer. Yeah. 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 I was, I was a fan. I saw, <laughs> I saw Crow made a TikTok with Boggle. This was like a year and a half ago at this point, I think. Yeah. And I was oh like, I, I was friends with Nico. And so I texted him. And I was like, can I please be in your band? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> this, is, this song is amazing. I, yeah. So I don't know. Boggle just, there's something about it. Even when we play it live, like I just get yeah. chills and start to like cheer up a little bit. So there is I would a- say that one. There is a magic in that song. I agree. Definitely. Right. And I, I read that. In, <laughs> yeah, I read that in the EPK as well, uh, that Sam was kind of like a, a fan of you guys before he became the drummer, um, which I think is really cool. So I understand that Boggle may be kind of a bit of a sentimental song for you as well, which is understandable. All right. Um, and Crow pre- previously said that their toxic trait is that they will, quote, approach any critter, um, no matter what it is. As for the rest of you, what are your toxic traits? They could be musically or not. Oh, that's such a good quote. That's such a good tweet. I don't even know where I came from. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the live stream. You really. Oh, that's so great. Wow. Nice. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. That's also your toxic trait. No, you just fly off your life. That's it. I'm horrible at texting back. That's my oh, toxic that's trait. Look at everybody get upset. You yeah. see everyone just all immediately. It's bad. Oh, I'm, I think I'm worse than you, though. Yeah, but like, we, we're good at, like, <laughs> we're good at, like, we all live together. So it like you can't escape one another. It's like if I am missing the text, you could always just like people will just knock and ask me what they need. Yeah. But uh, it's 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 bad. It's really bad. <laughs> I think, what is my toxic trait? Nico doesn't have any. He's just well, beautiful. <laughs> uh, I'm a coffee elitist, and I don't listen to many like contemporary, like much contemporary pop or like music. I don't know. Okay. I don't know if that's necessarily toxic, but I, I keep myself in my niche and very much in a niche. Mm. Why? Is that toxic? <laughs> I wouldn't say so. You just like what you like. <laughs> yeah, I very much like what I like. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to think for myself. I don't I don't know. The approaching any critter thing seems pretty appropriate. I feel like I'm I'm a huge I think we're all really big animal people yeah I, we have a, a taco in the house and uh, it's a cat and we <laughs> oh bullshit on my fucking sweaters today oh, i'm mad at i'm it's mad at her brutal. but taco is a feral animal she's really cute and i was trying to give her a treat the other day and she she pressed me so i don't know i i think i resonate with that that might be my my toxic trait i'll always i'll try to approach any critter 
even if it's taco, well, even, even if, if it's she's taco. mad. Sam's like <laughs> voice when he's talking to animals. I think favorite thing though. It's <laughs> <laughs> <gets> so loud. <laughs> Definitely. I think baby voice I is only acceptable. Maybe that's an toxic person. Well, because like some people don't like that when you do like a high voice. I love it. I, I so I'm glad y'all appreciate. It. Yeah, it's awesome. Maybe that's a little toxic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I wanted to talk about fruitcore for a moment. Um, I understand it's a self-dubbed genre, which reminds me a lot of Vada Vada, if any of you are familiar with uh, Wyatt and Fletcher Shears in the garden. Um, I'm curious in asking, because fruitcore, like the Spotify playlist uh, by Elton Audio on Spotify, is um, really interesting and has like a, a good collection of a bunch of different artists. Um, is fruitcore similar to Vada Vada in the way that the Shears twins kind of bring in other artists and bands into their like subgenre and classify them as um like fruit core or vada vada um and how do other artists of fruit core make their way in oh, fantastic question you guys are i think you guys are better well you seem better. to understand the reference there yeah well i think personally that like fruit core fruit core kind of stands like we have like the definition for it of like like rock mixed with like heavy like warm bass and like big drums yeah but, also, I think a lot of originality and 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 our brains seep directly into what we're playing. Like, yeah, like it's it's everything that we're playing is very conversational. It has like such a defined personality to like all the different elements because we're working from literally like crow's vocals, like that skeleton yeah. kind of just like. And we don't points. really put anyone in a box. We, we were kind of talking about that last night too. It's like we kind of let Nico write whatever he wants to write. We kind. Of let, like everyone just kind of pulls it in their own direction as opposed to being like doing what's best for the song our kind of approach is what's best for the song is what you want to do to it like crazy. we want everyone's like unfiltered opinion we'll make it fit yeah somehow um and then yeah like and in terms of the production like heavy heavy bass heavy drum um it being a rock song but like sort of um you know sonically resonating as a hip-hop track and if you played it in your car it would like thump really hard right. um yeah. that's sort of a characteristic and of course the fruit names yeah. right yeah. the fruit names are actually really important yeah uh, <laughs> it's, it's 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 one of the few things to get into the genre uh you need a what an, an adjective and a an adjective and, and fruit. well however <laughs> i was thinking about it though and i feel like if someone didn't have a fruit name but like just like made a, a, a fruit like related song or album or just li li like like that, that like you can like make a fruit core album yeah you, you, you can know? you can participate in fruit yeah core, even 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 without labeling yourself yeah That's, you know like if you're not a fruit core artist but you're like i want to explore the genre yeah. as, as many artists do with different genres you can you know you can be like fruit core agnostic yeah, <laughs> yeah. fruit core adjacent fruit core adjacent yeah. it's good understood I, I, what I just I, I just wanted to say too, like I feel like from again, like an outsider fan perspective first, like I feel like fruit core hearing that for the first time, like I, I feel like it really resonated with me because you have Crow's vocal delivery, which is obviously like this huge highlight, but you also have the low end that Nico's providing. You have Alex shredding, especially like on recent tracks too, which is so awesome and I love that we're hearing that. But you like also have these really deep lyrics that are super meaningful and stand out a bunch, like what you were talking about with risk resonating with a ton of people. That's hard. Um, not a lot of artists can pull that off. I'm a huge Tame Impala fan, but I half the time can't understand what is being sung. What the hell saying, dude? And you know, <laughs> I feel like the fact that we can pull that off is pretty remarkable. Again, from like a fan perspective, first too. It's I, I just I love that. And yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Interesting. And pick, kind of piggybacking off of that, um, I read in a different interview with WUOG um, that you guys draw a lot of inspiration from artists like Joe, Brandy Carlisle, uh, Dimitri Shostakovich. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, um, <laughs> but Diners, Tyler Broderick and Blues and stuff like that. Um, how do you guys draw inspiration from these artists and um, kind of adapt their sounds to work for you guys and for Fruit Court? Dude, that Joe album had like a hold on me. Yeah. The, you too, like over the yeah. summer change. That one. Um sonically, I take a lot of inspiration mm -hmm. from 
I think that record yeah. um, it's just so well done mm-hmm. um, so there's I guess like in terms of producing I kind of it's funny we'll take elements from each of those things that we like like maybe you're pulling the lyricism I feel like melodies for me is usually what I what I grab from that kind of like like the m- movement um, what about that the band that you like your favorite band oh um, active bird community like i feel like you Lyrically, pull a style yeah, from yeah, that yeah yeah sonically we'll pull something from over here like in production mm-hmm. i know i always joke with nico saying your bases that you seem like you're pulling from ska very all the much time. yeah that's well that's like my hometown i played a lot of like ska like in san diego and like surf rock is sort of like what my background was so coming into philly for school and meeting a theater kid and then and, and Alex. Uh, it was it was just a really interesting uh, blending of everything. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I, I don't, a theater kid. It's okay. It's just I, don't, I, I had to say it, but fucking like, on blast like that. <laughs> <laughs> we're it's so good. I don't know, but that's that's sort of what what I really enjoy is we all have like vastly different tastes and, and backgrounds and then we kind of blend it all into this weird uh um gradient of of tunes and, and sonic energy um that's what i steal from diners a lot is their message and kind of their i don't know diners music is just a very like wonderful friendly just world to live in like within their music and i think it's a good philosophy to hold in life and also to like kind of hold in uh, music as well like it's a nice practice so that's why i really enjoy it at least the diners that's why they're big and stuff definitely sam do you have anything you'd like to add um no i think i feel like that's pretty, that's, that's pretty yeah extensive. I, I i don't want to step on that answer i feel like that's pretty pretty much it Okay, awesome. And what's something that not m- many people would know about Mango Mega Mango? <laughs> Ooh. Hmm. I got a few. I'm not allowed. I don't know if like <laughs> like the name. Oh no. See? Ooh, I'm not allowed to say. That's embarrassing. It's a oh. secret of where we're gonna see. We we like all wake up at noon. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I feel like nice. people can kinda draw. I don't think people know that. at 8 30. Okay. Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Ah, oh, that's hard. We kind of smell funny. Yeah, we stink. We stink I was gonna say there's a little funny <laughs> smell going on. Like combined oh, stench. None of us like mangoes, and Alex is allergic oh, to allergic. mangoes. Do you like mangoes? really? I do. Nico likes mangoes. Nico is the only legit one. Crow doesn't like mangoes. Sam doesn't. You don't like mangoes. I do not like mangoes. And I don't. I can't eat them. They make He's me all itchy. We can't even have them in the house. Like this is that's not true. That, well, I'm gonna bring a mango to. People react. Just not only eat it, they react. Gotcha. And so you guys tend to have some uh, recurring themes when it comes to both your songs and your band in general. Um, Fruit, obviously, with the the title of Mega Mango, and board games with your song titles as well. Um, Do these two tie together in some way? And if so, what? Um, Fruit and board games, I don't think intentionally were tied together to begin with but i i do think that um aside from the music um aesthetics are very important to us um i know that personally um i've been paying a lot more attention to what i'm wearing um colors shapes um and i think that um using fruit as as part of the the brand and the aesthetic and also using board games it's too very colorful yeah um and we have potential to be more colorful i think too yeah. like our attire and like lights and show and you know that would definitely blend really well but yeah there was no like intentional these go well together it just kind of happened by accident and it just works it is cool to have like a theme i feel like not a lot of bands do that yeah. either yeah yeah um like it's i don't want to say a gimmick because like it's not really a gimmick like there's there is some significance like, especially like for the board games yeah. Um, yeah being like a storytelling device as well but mm-hmm. i don't know i like that i like that we have that 
Yeah, me too. And on the EPK, it mentions that Fruit Core is inspired by, um, obviously, Mega Mango, like I said earlier, and y'all's hometown of Philadelphia. I can see exactly where the inspiration comes from with Mega Mango. Um, but what is the fruity tie to Philly? Um, I don't think was, uh, I'm gonna be real. I don't think there was there was really oh, oh. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't think that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I think I think it kind of happened accidentally. I feel like I, I mean, I, I'll you speak for myself. Kind of fall into it. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I, I think that a lot of a lot of people would identify us as a queer band. Um, not all of us are queer, but I I I um I think that the the way that we present ourselves and and um i don't know i mean i mean personally i i'm non-binary and gay and um i'm i'm i'm, I'm not the voice um i think i i'm i mean I, I i would hope that that people see you guys as as at least an equal um a, a amount of a voice in 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 yeah. the band but 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 i think what i'm uh, people identify with the the content of our music and uh, me me being gay and writing about my personal experiences. A lot of people identify with that. So I think um, fruity um, <laughs> uh, being a, a qualifier. Um, I think I think it it wasn't intentional um, when we like named ourselves mega mango um like oh that's fruity and also like, we're came so far after that yeah yeah yeah. Like, yeah um and it just kind of like the word <clears throat> root core um happened as a joke i think in our twitter bio maybe our spotify bio it had an f for a yeah, long time yeah yeah it just because normally like regularly spelled yeah um and then we were joking about it at one point um and saying we should switch it to a ph because um because yeah, it's Philly. Uh, and I, I, I think I don't know. Obviously, the the PH is paying an homage to to Philly being where we're from. Um, like, not 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 where like we as people are from, but, but where Mega Mango originated and and the genre originated. But I don't think that to be fruit core, you have to be in Philadelphia. Or, yeah, no. It's 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 more just like that's that's where. Yeah came from it's know? like named after like like where it, where yeah. it came from there's a lot of genres that are like yeah, named yeah. after the location it grew you know it grew in and i think as a, as a whole you know we we promote just inclusivity and you know music bringing everyone together and just being a safe place for everybody you know so that's like the main it's the main goal mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's all the time that I have for today. And I appreciate you guys for sitting down with me and talking to me. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I hope the tour goes well for you guys as well. Thanks Take so care. Much. It was nice to meet you all. You too. Take care. Bye. Thank you for watching. Click the logo to subscribe or click the videos for more from the Pai channel.